welcome back everybody thanks for stopping by the channel uh so the long awaited update here at vermont scale customs so it has been i don't know probably about three and a half weeks i guess since my good uh, computer meltdown which kind of obviously put a big halt to my normal video editing schedule uploads and so on and so forth so had to adapt. I used uh, a 2008 MacBook Pro loaded with uh, Linux Mint like 14 or something crazy like that. <clears throat> Was still recording video my same way, but had to order uh, a card reader so I could import photo or import videos, uh, edit with a, an editor that I'm not used to editing with, and upload to YouTube, download to my um, iPad, and then manage things via that. So it was an interesting workflow to say the least. So I wanted to give you an update on the crawler situation here at the channel, kind of let you know what's going on with a few things. Um, this has been sitting around, I think sometime since the winter. It's the Albin designed uh, chassis that came as a complete rig uh, built by somebody out in the Northwest, I believe is where he's from. I can't actually remember. Um, but anyway, this is kind of a one of a kind build uh, with titanium and aluminum frame, titanium links and everything. Um, and since it's been here, it's been running these Endura shocks, which are oil filled. This has no adjustment basically for uh, the shocks as far as like where to move them. So it's kind of limited as far as like how much travel and everything it had. So it was also set up with the wheels and tires that are just currently on this just to simply be on here, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So I decided this morning to swap out a set of Yab Racing shocks. Uh, that's been sitting in a box and then also put my set of uh, pins on here along with RC four wheel drive stamp seal bead locks. And um, while it didn't open up a ton of articulation, it opened up more. Um, I realized that's not a whole lot, but, and also too, I, I am not running any springs in this, so there's no oil, no coil. Um, and it's just free floating and total droop and I like it a lot. I've already tested it out and it does everything that it wouldn't do before. And so I am going to continue to run it this way. Also want to point out too, that these tires have no flubber stuffers in them. Um, I'm just running foams with a little bit of air pressure behind them. That's kind of just trapped in the beadlock as you close them down, they're not vented at all. And personally, I, I prefer to run things that way. Um, they act like a, a real tire like that. And I really appreciate the compression, even including the sidewall compression, which they never totally fold over and the rims never, ever touch. So at any rate, that's how I'm going to run this for, for a while. So you probably start to see this a little bit more in some of the videos. I know I've been running the, the Dementor a lot. I wanted to run this more when I got it, but like I said, it just wasn't totally sold on the whole thing and it wasn't running the way that I had kind of felt like it needed to. So spent a little bit of time kind of tinkering with it this morning. So probably going to see that back out on the trail here soon. Maybe climbing some rocks. All right, on to the next one. This thing is just running like a champ. Um, I don't really plan on doing much else to it other than just running it until uh, something goes wrong. Super clocked on the front end with my own custom links uh, set up and I'm not going to go into any details right now about that right now because I can't remember all the numbers on it, but this thing has been running really well. Um, it definitely tackles some first ascents um, kind of faster than some of the other ones do. And so the setup on this thing is pretty sweet. I like it a lot. This is the NW Chassis Works uh, Pitbull. And I can kind of give you a little more of the details about this in the description. So make sure you scroll down for all the, the build components that make up of this one right here. So if you're looking to build one of those, get a hold of the NW Chassis Works and uh, have him send you one of those chassis and you'll be well on your way to uh, having something that runs just like this. And this, by the way, accepts the normal SCX24 skid, but it's uh, built, it's designed to have an incredibly forward pitch mount. So, um, it definitely has a different geometry than, than just normal stock SCX24. Yeah, Think climbs like a champ. Um, onward and upward, this is just a phenomenal machine. I can't say enough good about it. What I am going to do is that since I swapped out the shocks, uh, which these are oil filled, and these have been the Dasex Z2, which I've just been running coils and I'm like small bump stop coils up near the top inside to just keep it so it sort of sits down in that, that bedded uh, suspension feel. I'm gonna actually swap these out. 
so it's got something that uh, sort of slows the travel down a little bit. I'm just going to see if I like it, and if not, I'm just going to bounce it right back to the way that it is now because I've, I've loved it running this way. I may actually try and move these shock locations up to the top here. It's been an issue with not having uh, room because of how I had it set up before with the radio and everything, so since I'm not using that same setup now, I might have room to be able to take screws from this location back up to the top row and I'll probably uh, choose like this mount or, or this one here. And then uh, I'm pretty happy with where things are on the back. So I think once I load these up, probably gonna choose the same spots there. So um, looking forward to seeing how that runs with those on here. And um, cause like I said, this thing is just, it's nonstop. If I had anything to compare it to, it would be the LCG chassis buildup that I did probably midsummer last year and started running in places like uh, the Cascades. Um, and this really does just outclimb, outperform everything all the way around. It's got the RS100 servo on the front of it now. Uh, and what else did I do? I put the micro radio system in it, which allows me now to run a 300S in there, or a 300 milliamp, 300, 3S, excuse me. And so it's just got an amazing amount of runtime. I love the way it's front end weighted. It seems to climb really well. You've seen the videos. It's not set up exactly how everybody else sets theirs up. And I realized that, um, and I built it my way, you know, and I think I really like how it runs. I'm just gonna experiment a little bit more with the shocks because these are the only ones that have been on here for now. Uh, and I've loved the way that this thing, as sloppy as it is, I like it. I know a lot of guys would never set their rigs up this way. I set it up this way because I wanted to experiment with it and I think it climbs and does great. I love how it just noodles over everything. Uh, but a lot of people would argue with having it having too much articulation. I think it's gonna have the same when I put these on here. It's just gonna flow a little bit different and it might, might just be a little bit smoother, might kind of kind of slow things down just a little bit. We'll see what that does. Right now, I kind of like the speed at which it, it drops wheels out and stuff like that. Um, I just want to see if I can kind of quiet the chassis down just a little bit, maybe a little bit in this tail end to sort of get that side to side uh, movement sort of cleaned up a little bit. So on to the big last thing right here and now. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much. I'm not going to go into crazy details, but I think for the time being, the MOA build, um, I'm going to hit pause on this thing for a bit. Um, I ordered this ESC from China, um, which was originally supposed to be the 10 AX2, um, which is a dual brushed. However, we're talking unidirectional. So when this thing showed up and I hooked it up, I realized immediately there's no reverse. So not only do I not have reverse, um, I don't have the switch on here to be able to switch from independent control to mixed control. You have to actually solder that joint together, which I tried and I still obviously couldn't get the function to function the way that I, I thought maybe if there's a chance I could get this to run in just forward, maybe I can sort of deal with it and learn how to deal with rollback, I guess, or something like that. But try running a try running a car with no reverse at some point in time and see how it works out for you. So the option still remains that I can put the old ESC back on this thing and again, try it with the lower RPM motors, which is still very much an option. So I'm not totally giving up on this just yet, but at least for the time being, I don't really have the time I want to dedicate this. This was a, a winter project that that up until a couple weeks ago was running, it just wasn't running as well uh, as I wanted it to. And it had just a couple of other things that I've discovered about the geometry that I've uh, incorporated into it that I need to change, uh, that I thought were gonna work out, but they didn't, unfortunately. One of them being just recently, I, I moved uh, the front upper link location back a little bit, which now unfortunately allows for it to slip into this particular position here which isn't gonna work. Uh, it did it a couple times while driving <laughs> and decided that, you know, I've gotta, I gotta head back to the drawing board on this because I made the links for it and it's all on a Fury Tech Scythe chassis with Z2 MOA axles. It basically just tried to cop together an MOA and it sort of worked, but it hasn't really entirely worked. And so, like I said, I just wanna hit pause on it. 
after putting in the ESC, and this is like the fourth or fifth ESC I've tried running in this thing, and after getting mixing functioning and all that good stuff, I just, I, I can't put any more energy into it. I have, a, you know, it's summer now coming around, and so I need to kind of get back into like a video editing schedule instead of, you know, editing videos of me working on, you know, micros. So um, it's time to kind of get down to business. Worlds are coming up, which right now, according to my watch, I'm still gonna stay on target for, for staying entered and competing in Worlds. Uh, and that's coming up in September. So my schedule is kind of tightening up and narrowing up that this thing, I really can't dedicate the time to it. So pretty much with that, uh, I do want to bring uh, up the whole 1300 subscriber threshold. Thank you very much for, for crossing that. I think as of today, it's like at 13.05. So to all the new subscribers that have joined on, even through the hardship times of not being able to upload good full videos or any how-tos or anything like that, thanks to all the new subs. I really appreciate all of you guys being around. It really helps the channel a lot. Obviously, you know, you're here on YouTube, you know what it does. So, um, so hopefully I'll get back into a little bit more of a steady editing schedule now that the uh, computer is back up and running. It took about three or four days to get all of that stuff kind of ironed out. My workflow has totally changed once again. Uh, so it's, I, I will say this though, when, uh, when I rendered my first video, um, that probably would have taken about 45 minutes with the old machine. It took a minute and 40 seconds with the new one. And then I, just as a, as a, out of a curiosity, I, I, I ended, I rendered another like three and a half minute video last night and it took less than a minute and a half start to finish to render a 4k video with the new machine. So the performance of that thing is just out of control. Um, and, and it's weird that I was using a machine that's only about 10 years old, uh, beforehand, you know, and so. And it had, you know, it had what I consider to be fairly decent specs, you know, with like a quad core processor and 32 gigs of RAM, but to switch to a six core processor with 72 gigs of RAM, that thing just chews through the data like I can't believe. So hopefully I'll have an even steadier video upload schedule for you guys to uh, enjoy. So once again, thanks for being here. Thanks for all the new subs. Thanks for all the comments, likes, everything. Um, channel continues to grow so we're going to continue to make videos <laughs> uh, no really for, for real thanks a lot everybody and uh, we'll see you soon see you on the next one and hopefully I have some running videos here coming up soon if the weather holds out it's been a rainy 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 last couple of weeks on the east coast so take it easy out there we'll see you on the next one